Now we can run to our front limit over here. Yeah. Yes, you <laughs> 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 Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to another video at Ivan and Whitney's Kitchen. So today we're actually out here in the HQ very early in the morning because we have a subscriber coming and we're here making some preparations for some escovish fish and some fried bami. So yeah guys, we have some really nice fish here. Of course, some are from Dream Island Boss, but you guys do know we have other vendors that we outsource from to make sure that we get the huge number of fish that you guys request. So no number is too large, as long as we can get the fish, we're getting it for you guys. So yeah, I have my special seasoning blend right here, so. Wanna done know? It's a mix. Now I'm gonna say exactly what is in it, you know, but me I tell you know. I love mixing my seasoning. It allows for such a variety of flavor in the food. And I'm gonna tell you know, if you ever try this, problem. Now I'm gonna go back anywhere else to fish. All right guys, so like I mentioned, you know, we have some really really good fish If you guys take a look at it and the size is fantastic The quality is fantastic as well. If you look at the fish eyes, you can know So once it's not sunken in and it looks Poked out from a side like this, you don't know it's fresh fish. So yeah, man, Dream Island Boss did a really great job And say a bird in by them from it actually some of you may have seen that guy in Cameron family TV's video So we actually use him as a vendor as well guys I may tell you know, you can't send any anybody go buy a fish, you know. So when we send Dream Island Boss and see them, you know, yeah, really satisfied with the product that he bought. He knows exactly how to shop for the fish. See what they? Yes, guys, we're there, morning, morning, we're there, bird again, see there? Yeah, see me, I hold some fish here. Yeah, yeah. see me? Mm. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. hold some fish running there. When you come here, remember to ask the bird. Yeah. Bird is something, leave it something, man. Ask the, you ask the bird. I ask the bird. Yeah. Man, well, something nice fish in the area. Where are you going? Yes, guys, the beach is fully active, you know, so I go on. Yeah. Up. Oh, all type of fish in the place. You know. Come here already. Bird is sad, no. Mm -hmm. Yes, guys, I say you're going on. Yeah. So, guys, I eat that. Well, I'll be a little light wind coming over. Just after the earthquake, everybody settled down back to business as usual. Yeah. So, guys, I'm going to stay tuned you now to see how we prepare some fish. It's yeah, a special subscriber. Yeah, that is it. Yes guys, now we'll all be again the same way. After the earthquake everybody come back to normal already. Yeah. So we we'll to go to the fish and we show a while ago. So when we come right here, so come say that Miss Louise style, don't laugh you now, just ask Miss Louise. Come right say that style. You hear that guy talk about earthquakes here, but a business as usual. Music and play everybody normal again. Yeah, that is it, guys. So see there? Yes, yeah, so the bummy there. Right now, we'll have a beer, right at the fish market. Yeah, pass through now. Different, different type of fish at the place. Yes. Yeah. You see there, guys? They have a big snapper. Yeah. Come ask Chrissy, look on her, see her there? Yeah, Chrissy. Yeah, when you come, guys, ask Chrissy, give them your number. 864-2968. You hear that, guys, so? Press snapper, just. Yeah, start again, 876. 876, 864 2968 Chrissy. Yes, come on, Chrissy, guys. Right, and, you, and then we tell you what I'm going. Get some special prize, you know? Yeah, that is it. That is it. Yes. And here guys, as I said, we have to make sure the seasoning goes so so good on this stuff. I mean, I tell you, know, you already know if you watch my previous videos, seasoning is everything for food. Right? 
You don't season your food properly. One of the worst things. So yeah, one day I'll tell you guys about my blend of seasonings that I use. But for now, when I have to go, just think of it as a secret. So we're just going to continue like this until we finish with the rest of the fish. And we're going to drop it into our frying pan so you guys can stay tuned. So when you want to see that sizzle? You guys are going to love it. Morning guys. Yeah. I'm going in a pot now. So we are waiting for it yet now. We are going to put in some ground seasoning in it as you know. Like the scallion, garlic and pepper. Stay tuned. Yeah, guys, as you can see, Beryl really did a number on the farmers. This is the side of the scale that we're getting now, you know, guys, in the market. But we don't have a better choice, so we just really have to just take the final one and run with it. But yeah, man, they still get the job done. It's just a bit more difficult to deal with stripping these off and cutting them up. But yeah, them still have the flavor, so that's all we want. Oh. As I mentioned in previous videos, guys, these have to cut out a lot of the rawness that comes with fish. As I know many people, a lot of the times you go to your different restaurants and stores, when you taste the fish, you always have this raw taste to it. Many of that is because the fish isn't washed first of all, and they don't use these seasonings in the pot. So guys, as I mentioned, I told a subscriber the same thing and suggested that she try it this way. When I tell you guys, she came back and said it was one of the most fantastic hacks she's ever tried. Like, let me tell you guys, it makes a world of difference. If any of you can try it at home, I strongly suggest it. Alright guys, so we're going to get these into the pot like I mentioned before. Just gonna drop these into the pot. Yeah. Okay. So guys, my oil was already heating up, so it's going to cook in the oil faster. But what I do recommend is actually putting it into the cold oil first and just letting it heat over time. Yeah, so you can just avoid uh, how much it's popping in the pot. Yeah guys, so we're actually, we actually waited until these reached a certain color. As you guys can see, it's browned up nicely. We don't want it to get to a point where it turns black. All we're doing is extracting the flavor from this into the oil. I find that when you leave it in the oil, it tends to make it bitter, and we don't want that. So we just remove it once it reaches a certain stage. So these can brown a bit more. The onion. So yeah, the garlic can brown a bit more. The onions and scallions have been taken off. Yeah guys, so we're just taking off our garlic right now. Like I said, you just want to make sure it gets to this stage, golden brown, and then you remove it. There's no need to let it simmer in the oil for too long. Like I said guys, the garlic does get bitter. Let's grab this on your cousin. Alright guys, and we're going to be adding in our fish very very soon. We're just giving it time to reach to a certain temperature so that we can just drop it in. Because those of you who don't know, when you're frying fish, the oil needs to be very hot. Otherwise, the skin of the fish will melt off. So yeah guys, we're not using a non-stick frying pan. Majority of the bigger pots, the frying pans that they have out here, they're generally not non-stick. So if you don't allow the oil to hot properly as well, it will most definitely stick to the pot. So if you're using a pot like that, it's better to make the oil hot. So guys, you can know from experience when the oil is hot. Also, one trick I always show people, you can poke your fish like this, get a piece of it on the fork, dip it in the oil. When you see it sizzling like this, you know it's ready. You can see that piece of the fish already getting golden, so you know that oil is ready. Yeah. Yeah. Alright guys, so we're going to get our first fish into the pot. Guys, make sure you always lay it away from yourself. Never lay it towards yourself when you're putting it into the pot. But it's going to pop slightly. Alright, alright. Alright, 
So we have our bunny here that we're going to fry. What I'm actually going to do is cut it up into four pieces each. But what I like to do is actually stack them on top of one another. So like you can do two at a time or three at a time. Whatever your knife allows for, you can do. So you just take your sweet through the knife like this. Pretty simple. And then you cut this into two again. And you get these sizes, which are perfect. So I'm just going to be doing every single piece this way until I'm completely finished. All right, guys. So we are removing our first set. And guys, we just get them on napkins to drain the excess oil. You know, a lot of people after they fry fish, they just leave it as is. But you really need to get that excess oil off of it. And we're going to drop in the next set. Yes, no, mommy, if I'm in action. It doesn't say I share the real country lady, you know. Hey yeah, guys, one of the basic rules of frying anything, do not overcrowd your pot. Because we can end up with a terrible result. Especially when it comes down to fish. Right, and we're getting somewhere. Oy. And we just have this amount left. And like I said, I started on cutting up my bummy. So we're going to be in the process of getting everything done. You guys can watch what's going on. So yeah guys, I'm going to be adding the final touches to my vinegar sauce. Now I started this from last night but I didn't get a chance to video it for you guys. So what I'm actually doing now is adding in some pepper because pretty much everything is in there already. So you can come and have a look. I have in my onions, my pimento seeds and my carrots. And now it's just left for the pepper to go in. And guys, we normally prepare the sauce very fresh, so it cannot be more than two days old. I will make it the same day, to be honest with you. Because the sauce doesn't last. Honestly, when people come here, they tend to want all of the sauce. Like, every time I make a jar of sauce, it finishes immediately. So, we just generally have to always make it. So even if it's a big batch, it always finishes. So we're not going to be adding in too much pepper. What I like to do is actually add a mixture of peppers into it. So that allows for more variety of flavor. So yeah guys, some peppers are hotter than others so you need to take note of that. The green ones are not very hot but they have a lot of flavor to them. The yellow ones now, they have that spice kick to them but they also have that good flavor. And the red ones now, I'm telling you, they look fantastic. So we also want to think about presentation when we're doing this. So we do have the option for people who come here. If you want extra pepper, we can add that for you. You have to make sure there is enough sauce. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, so we just got our sauce onto the stove. Now one thing worth mentioning, if you guys want your sauce to stay over a long period of time without changing color, because once you add heat to that, it's going to change the color of the sauce. 
So what you can do if you don't want that to be the case, you can actually just leave it in the vinegar to soak over a period of time. It gets soft eventually, but it's just going to take a longer wait time. But because we're doing it for people so often, we just make it by boiling it. So we always make it fresh. So yeah guys, you can actually smell the vinegar sauce when it starts to boil up. That's one of the tricks to knowing when you're supposed to look at it to turn it off. Now one thing I will say to you guys now, do not do this in an enclosed area. The scent gets very very strong. You need to make sure you have proper ventilation before you actually do any of this. Because when you boil the vinegar, it emits such a strong scent. It's strong enough to go down into your lungs, strong enough to knock some people out. And you guys, I am begging you, please take the proper precautions when you're doing this. As it's not no little beer, they sent me at all, you know. You know like when people clean them house and they mix bleach and all sorts of cleaning products? Yeah man, see them so. So make sure to take the proper precautions when you're making this. So yeah guys, this is what we have here. It's looking very very lovely and beautiful. So we're just going to leave this to cool down. So you guys can take it out of the container if you want to cool it down quicker. Just put it into something that you know is safe for heat and leave it to cool down. Or you can just leave it there to cool down if you're not in any rush whatsoever. So we're going to get back to looking at our fish now guys. So we're getting somewhere now. So these guys want to fry a bit more before we actually take it out. But it's going on good so far. Yeah guys, so I get to open the third set of fish them now. But you know, when I take them out, you have to drain off the eye. If you have a lot of oil in the pan. Mm -hmm. I remember guys, when I take out the fish them, you see where I put the fork? That's where you're supposed to put your fork. Yeah, one, one. Yeah. I'm going to yeah, get you some more fish in the fat now, guys. Yeah, guys, I'm going to get you some more Yeah, they're getting the last of the now. And I still have one in the finish it and see if it's okay. I'm going to get it. Let's get another one. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, guys, so we're just on the last of the tassels right now. See if it's okay. So this is the last set of fish that we actually finished now. Yeah, remember me tell you know, when you take out the fish then, make the island drain out properly. And so we have a lot of oil. That is it guys. Look beautiful. It's beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, they're ready to do with the escovish sauce now, guys. Okay, so I'm actually gonna get started on my preparations for the bami. Now, a lot of the times when people are frying bami, they don't realize how easily it can go wrong. So it can become too soft or too tough, depending on how you fry it. Now, a lot of people, they just add sauce to the bami and fry it like that, or they just fry it after cutting it up. But one thing I like to do, I learned this from Dream Island Boss, actually. We mix some sugar and water together and we dip the bami in that. So we're not soaking it in it, we just dip it and then we take it out and get it ready to fry. Now what this does, it allows the inside of the bami to have that softness that you need but the outside still crisps up nicely. So yeah man, this is it. Now you don't really need a lot, you just want to make sure that it's on the sweeter side. It's like if you're mixing lemonade, but you want it to be a bit sweeter than that. 
All right, guys, so it's time to actually get our bami into the pot. So as I said, we're not soaking these. We're actually just dipping them. We're actually just dipping them in the water like this on both sides. And we take it out and put it into our pot. So just shake off the excess. So you just shake off the excess and you put it into the pot like so. And you're going to do this with all of your bami. Now the bami fry is relatively quicker, guys. So just want to make sure you move fast when you're doing this. You can actually pre-dip them and put them to one side. So it's just okay for you to do it when you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Now work out all the way. And guys, remember it's sugar water. You don't have to use gloves if you're making this for yourself, but because we're making this for guests, it's just better to use the gloves. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start looking at the first one. So you want to make sure you keep an eye on them for when they start to brown. Alright, so we're good so far. We're just going to add in the rest. Guys, like I said, multitasking is very important. You have to learn how to do that if you're going to cook. Mm -hmm. Give this one a nice soak. It's gonna go right here. Okay, guys, do not overcrowd the pot. You just want to have enough in there so that you're getting ample amount of fry time. You're getting a good amount in the batch. And it's frying perfectly and crispy and nice but still soft on the inside. When you overcrowd the pot, it doesn't tend to cook well. So it's the same concept with everything you're frying. Not just the fish, but also other things you're frying. So yeah guys, when the customer comes, they'll decide whether they want the sauce on it right now or not. We don't throw the sauce on it just with the order like this because you know it can soak through and the fish becomes wilted and it becomes too soft. You want that crispness to still be there. So yeah, any order that we're doing, we make sure the customer knows about it and they tell us what to do. All right. So like I said, we cater to everybody's taste. So yeah, guys, the base level price for a meal without yes. a drink is 3,200. If you want a drink with it, it's going to be 3,500. And you guys can decide whatever side dish you want with it. So yeah, guys, the side dishes would be the festival, bami, or breadfruit. You can get roast breadfruit or fried breadfruit. It depends on what you want. So guys, if you're doing an order with the fish more than the pound size fish, the base rate will change, of course. So we discussed all of the details. You guys will be able to find the number on the screen right now. So it's 876-316-8138. It's also going to be linked in the description so you guys can take a look, call, WhatsApp, whatever the case may be, and you guys can get in touch with us to deal with all of this. Now you guys can also buy extra sauce if you want to. We normally give our customers a really good amount of sauce, but if you want some to take home, we do make that so you guys can actually bring it along with you. So you guys can stay tuned. Yeah. All right, guys. So we finished up everything and our subscriber just came here to pick up. Another happy subscriber taking food and gone guys as miss said our subscribers are the best you guys support us in so many ways we have to be really thankful for it We're extremely grateful and we love you guys so so much any of you as subscribers can get this same package the details are before as i mentioned i'm gonna put it in the description as well so you guys can see it or in a pinned comment so you guys can actually just have that info at hand so you don't have to really be looking and searching for it readily and Remember, we have to respect our subscribers' privacy. For any of you who want to come here and don't want to be on camera, that's completely fine with us. So, you would have seen in the video, the subscriber was not present while they're collecting the food. Privacy reasons, as I mentioned, guys. Any of you that want to come, it's totally fine. You don't have to be on camera. So, I'm right now, I'm just getting some stuff cleaned up so that we can actually pack up and head home because we're going to have some chores to run to deal with, some errands to run. And a few other things that will probably video for you guys or do a live. So we'll see you soon. Until the next one, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Peace out.